Hello guys, my name is Guillaume and welcome to a new episode of Hit The Tone. This is loud, satisfyingly loud, obviously. What's up guys, I hope you're all doing fantastic today and welcome to this new episode of Hit The Tone on Thomas Guitars and Basses. If you're new here, welcome. What I do is take bits of famous songs, riffs, licks and try to give you all the tools you need to hit the tone. And the cool thing about this is that you get to choose what song I'm covering next. Just put it in the comment section and I'll get to you as soon as I can. While you're down there, if you can consider liking this video, subscribing to the channel, that would be awesome. Thank you so very much in advance. And with this out of the way, let's start with today's song, which is More Than A Feeling by Boston. Someone suggested that song a few months ago at this point, from date of recording, I'm not too sure. I think it was the either Queen, Queen video, if I'm not mistaken. Someone said, yeah, try that one, you'll have a good time. I did. Thank you. <laughs> the fact that even Boston's guitar player couldn't reproduce his own tone and had to invent an entire amp rack module system to just try and get close to it is really not a reassuring fact. Let's start in order and with our guitar for the day, which is our usual uh, Les Paul standard gold top. You're familiar with her, she's been in tons of video at this point. And she's gonna do close enough of a job, at least in my opinion, to emulate Tom Schultz's guitar, which was also a Gibson Les Paul, but mounted with P90s. These are not particularly high output humbuckers, and I think from, as long as you're not running like EMG or like really high output, Seymour Duncan blackout or something, you should be fine with whatever humbucker you have. Ideally, you'd have a guitar with P90s, which I don't have right now. But that's gonna be my guitar for the day. Let's now have a look at our amp and pedal setup. I usually give you guys a taste of what the guitar into the amp sounds like, and it's, it's all fun and games, but it doesn't make a lot of sense in that context because Boston's guitar sound is so processed that it's hard to talk about just a guitar into an amp kind of scenario, unless you manage to grab one of Schultz's creations, a, a Brockman rack modular massive system that he had to create to actually play his own songs live. You're gonna need to add a lot of things to get closer to his sound with just an amp and some pedals. So, today I will be using the Marshall JCM 800 Lead Series. The controls will be on your screen and you will see then that we are mostly using power amp distortion there. The master volume is fully cranked. The preamp volume is about halfway up. So we're not trying to distort it too much, but we want that power amp sort of coloration, mostly in the low end, but it does appear through the presence in the treble as well. And then what you're gonna want to do is use an EQ pedal. If you watched last week's video about cancer, carry on my wayward son, same trick basically, just a little bit of a different curve. Today we're pushing mostly around 800 hertz, what you'd associate with guitar mid-range, that's about there. That's a result you can easily have with that pedal, the Boss G7, for example, but the MXR 7, 5, 10, 12 band, they have like so many of them. Another cool trick that you can think of is use your wah pedal, for example. If you cut your wah pedal into a certain position, you need to use your ears to sort of identify the mid-range. That's a very cool trick, uh, which is obviously associated to guitar players like Mark Knopfler, for example, who used that in the studio as well. But this is what we're doing right now. And same as last week, again, once more, but hey, 70s guitar tones, right? This main riff uh, was, I think, again, panned stereo. And when you do that, inherently, both guitar tracks are gonna be chorusing together. So to emulate that, I'm still running the Juliana by Walrus Audio. Very, very soft in the mix. Very low, very conservative settings. We don't want the chorus to come out as a chorus effect, but just to add that sort of, you know, background motion of your guitar signal. And putting all of this together is going to take us there. <laughs> There's some things missing here and there. I think mostly some sort of echo on the lead part. The output level on the lead and the gain parts 
are also different on the album, but that's something that you cannot possibly do with an amp unless you have MIDI presets and you can tweak the uh, input volume, output volumes, obviously smashing some effects for just very, very specific parts. But I think we are in the right ballpark if you want to play that kind of song. And that's my main objective here. Obviously, if you buy all of the things, you can do all of the sounds and, and preset everything and have five patches per intros and 20 per song or whatnot. It's a lot of fun as well, but this is not really accessible. So I think this is a good point. I'm going to stop there and we are going to go on to the last section of that video, which as usual is the most important and is how to play the song. We are going to focus on that guitar track, the first little bit of lead because it, it won't take much time to explain and then we'll jump onto the riff. Let's first have a look at the fretting side of it. If you want to get the timing right, you'll need to play with someone else or you'll need to recall that bit and then recall the other one because you cannot play both at once since the lead part fades out to leave room to that massive pick scrape, pick slide, pick... I'm not sure about the words really. You need a plastic pick and you just slide it across the strings to go into the riff which is going to look like this. <laughs> And that's it, that's, there's, there's really not much to it. It's four chords, four, it's one chord in four different places. It's just one power chord. It's rock and roll. These riffs made rock and roll as we know it now. And it's, it's just a lot of fun to play. Nothing crazy going on the picking side. We're just gonna have a quick look through the lead and the rhythm parts. <laughs> You definitely do want to pay attention to how accurate your bends are if you want to go into the lead section and the picking pattern on the verse riff. When you start playing guitar, I know that kind of coordination with your right hand to try and get da 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 it's, it's kind of a thing of its own if you're beginning at least, but take it slow, really listen to it several times and try to get the movement going and I'm sure you'll get there in no time. For any one of you guys who have more experience, just have fun. And this is the this is awesome to play. And with all of that said and done, I think that's it guys. You have all the tools you need to hit the tone on More Than A Feeling by Boston. Don't forget to go check out the description box down below. You will find links to uh, all the gear that I'm using today, some more recommendations at different price points, uh, the tabs as well if you need to spend some more time learning the song. I hope you enjoyed that video. I hope you had fun. Maybe you've learned something today and if so, please consider liking it and subscribing to the channel. We greatly appreciate it. And in the meantime, I wish you guys a fantastic week and I'll see you next month Monday in a new episode of Hit the Tone.